The challenges that first responders face in the midst of this pandemic has been underscored by the fact that many departments have faced shortages of personal protection equipment. And being on the front lines means that both police and fire departments are also dealing with their own members who have become ill with the virus. To examine the challenges, I spoke with Springfield Police Commissioner Cheryl Claproot. We've gone through some pretty drastic changes here, all for the health and well-being of the officers and the ability to keep a, a force that can respond to anything that we're needed for for the community. So the building itself at 130 Pearl Street has an eerie feeling because there's not many of us here. There's enough clerical and en enough detectives to do the daily um, investigations and, and the daily um, routines here at 130, but I would say at any given time, you're probably talking only about 20 people here during the day, which um, usually we'd have around 100. We've displaced everyone so that if the virus got into 130 Pearl, instead of giving it to, amongst ourselves, I have a group of officers that now work out of the Dwight Street substation, a group that works at Tapley Street, a group that works at East Street, and a group that works out of Maple Street. Um, we did this so that at any one time, not everybody gets sick. We, we've kind of spaced them out. We, we clean cruisers daily, um, before shift and after shift and in between the janitorial staff here, as well as all those substations I mentioned are great. They, they're doing the whole building before shifts and after shifts. So I, I think it's because of all those steps we've taken that I'm not down as many officers as, as what I feared. Tell me about how many officers you are down, um, and some, some would have the virus, others are just sick. Right, just COVID uh, absences alone. I'm down today, 22 people, 21 office, officers and one civilian. At last week, um, at one point, I was up to 39 um, because of the COVID virus, but it, it's actually getting, uh, I hate to say it, a little bit better. And again, I think it's the precautions we've been taking um, I actually have five officers who are back to work today that did test positive weeks ago. Um, two more maybe tomorrow. So there might be seven um, that I'm back from testing positive that fortunately got mild symptoms and then did the quarantine as recommended and, and are coming back to work. How many actually tested positive so far? I was up to 14 um, officers that tested positive. And you were talking about how the cruisers are cleaned every day. I, I notice that police officers are riding around alone in those cruisers. Is that how you're dispatching people? Yeah, that was another um, step we made as soon as it happened. Um, we have the crime rate here in Springfield is such that and the locations of some are such that I, I really do like two-man cars. But because of, of this virus, it was the thing to do to go in one-man cars so that we don't spread it amongst ourselves. So the maintenance and, and the... Uh, the uh, transportation crew did a great job and every car that could get running, we got running so that they're out there by themselves and, and not spreading the virus to anybody. In between, we have some good cleaning solutions. We have a couple companies that will come in and do it for us if we want, but because of the people in and out of the cars, um, they've been doing a good job on making sure the cars are disinfected at each store. How are they responding to calls if they're out alone in a cruiser, you know, 911 comes into a certain address, how is that handled? What they'll do is, uh, Carly, if it's a, normally a cruiser, it's usually calls for a two-man car, they send two one-man cars. And what happens is when one gets there, if he or she can take the call, they'll disregard that second, second call. If it's a domestic or something serious, they'll wait for that other officer to get there, and then the two will handle it. They'll try to uh, socially distance as long as they can, but sometimes in, in our world, it's, it's inevitable. And uh, that, that's when all the, the, the protective equipment and, and all their training will come into play. Because that has to be incredibly difficult if it, it is a domestic violence situation or you have to enter somebody's apartment or house. Um, you're not keeping those distances. How are you doing as far as that protective equipment? Now I'm doing good. Today I'm doing well, and it's in a big part to uh, Mayor Sarno's desperate plea um, there. We were low on masks. I just about got everybody uh, an N95 mask. And, and then I worked on getting everybody a spare because we can go through them quite rapidly, whether they get damaged 
soiled or, or, you know, the officers sweat when they're doing some of their things. So I had two apiece, and then Mayor Sarno put out the all call when we found out we were off of NEMA's list to uh, receive them. We, we thought we were going to get them, and then we found out we weren't even on the list to get them. So Mayor Sarno, he's always been a big supporter. He got out there, and, and he made the plea. And uh, one of the biggest contributors is the CR. RC Railroad um, company that makes the trail railroad uh, cars. They came through with 10,000. That was big. Tight Flex, Sheriff Kochi, Mass Mutual. They started coming through so that I, I now have pl a plenty. So I'm starting to stockpile. I don't want to be in that same position should this virus either come back in the fall or something else happen. It was a terrible position for us to be in with nothing in, in store. Tell me a little bit about how the National Guard is being used. The National Guard right now is only being used at the structures put up across the street from the homeless shelter. That's a huge parking lot. There were three different structures. They call them tents, but in reality, the only um, really thing that they have in common with a tent is the canvas walls and ceiling because there's a full floor. It's, it's a cleanable, um, washable floor. There's heat, there's hot water, there's, 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 um, there's going to be air conditioning. I hope we don't need it, but everything is in there. So that's where I'm using the National Guard. The only way you're going to get people to use those facilities is if they feel safe. So with the National Guard presence, they're, they're on the gate, they're in the back, their trailers right there. Um, I can keep people safe when they want to use those facilities and I can keep people from entering that don't belong. Tell me a little bit about the state police. Are they helping uh, patrol, you know, where you have gaps? They are. The state police give me anywhere from nine to 12 troopers a shift. And what they've been used for primarily is backup. Um, there are still times where we get kind of busy and we are a little bit short staffed here from the get go. Before COVID, I was a little bit low. So they're out there to make sure that every officer has backup when it's needed and every 9 11 call gets answered. And the sheriff's department is also taking uh, prisoners. Is that correct for you? They've been very much uh, involved in the transportation. We've been dropping them off at Ludlow. They've been doing arraignments from the Ludlow jail. Um, Sheriff Kochi will take some of my um, transports from Bay State Hospital to the Ludlow jail for me. And, and the sheriff is still in Forest Park, making sure that that's a safe facility for people to use. Because I think a lot of people, and I know that you had mentioned this in one of your columns, you know, would worry that, oh gosh, if there's a lot of police officers sick, you know, tell us about public safety. Obviously, that's still being taken care of in the city. Still being taken care of. I, we have never gotten that low here within our own ranks where I really needed any help. But it's like anything else in, in a disaster or catastrophe. Sometimes if you don't get that help right away, if you need it three, four weeks into the, the problem, you're not going to get it there. So the mayor and I, I think, made the right call in getting some National Guardsmen here. Um, the state police offered, and uh, they have some troopers who were used in like the, their school unit or the casino that were available, and they were familiar with Springfield. So it just made sense so far. So in the meantime, as everybody's trying to deal with this social distancing, and I know you've made adjustments, you know, these officers are still being dispatched for emergencies, maybe for a gun call, uh, other sorts of enforcement. How are they handling it? I think they're doing well. And, and you know what's helping is, is um, the generosity and, and the well wishes and, and all the programs that people are doing for them. I, I mean, you know, you, it sounds trivial, but it kind of picks them up a little bit. People have parades and they want them to partake. And we see little kids coming by here with signs. Thank you for doing what you're doing. Hearts on people's doors, breakfast, lunch, um, people delivering food here. It, it, it makes a difference because it, you know, it, it's tough for them because I understand they don't want to be out here dealing with people under these circumstances because of what they could bring home to their families. But these little gestures, are making a big difference in the morale here. What do you still need as you uh, move forward through the next few weeks? Um, we need a little bit of patience and understanding from the community. Um, you know, we, we try to take the calls for, hey, there's a group gathered here, and what are you going to do about it? And, and so far, people are heeding our advice and, and, and leaving. But please know that we don't want to be the you know, the, the, the kids on the block that, that are the mean ones that get involved every time you stand 
four feet instead of six feet and, and we're busy enough as it is. So a little understanding with that. And the only thing of equipment that I've asked for is for the infrared thermometer that we can't seem to get. What I did was we started registering the sex offenders again. Um, so they have to come into our lobby one at a time. But both girls who do that work, both police officers have been very sick just before this outbreak. And it turns out it was influenza A, but they're sure that's how they got it. it. It's that population that comes in. I would like to make them even safer. They have PPE now and, they, and we make the people wait outside six feet apart, bring them in one at a time. But I think it would be of great safety if I could take everybody's temperature before they came in.